Good day, Kabibal, and welcome to our Learn at Home series. For the discussion this evening, our topic will be on Find Motor Difficulties, Making Writing Difficult and Eligible. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. First, make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.bibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions in the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Bibal webinars. Experience learning, Kabibal. And now, to proceed with our webinar this evening, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker. Our speaker for this evening is a consultant, evaluator of K-12 Philippine Basic Education, Curriculum, and Academic Consultant for Sisters of Mary Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brother Roderick M. Aguirre. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So... Uh, welcome for a whole week of uh, uh, learning, uh, focusing on how we can intervene uh, with possible uh, learning, learning, uh, learning problems of our students. And it is very important for us as teachers to be able to identify some students who are having difficulty with some, with some areas of their, uh, of their skills, especially on academic side of their, um, the learning. I know there are other skills that they need to uh, acquire as they grow older and they become professionals, but we need to focus more on things that they are struggling with right now, especially that they are learning at home, so that as educators, we are able to be partners with the parents in order to help them uh, cope with and overcome these um, this difficulties. So we'll just call them difficulties because we've, um, there's, uh, these are possible uh, um, areas that students may be struggling with because of the new normal and they may not have had this difficulty in the previous school year because uh, the teacher the teacher there's a face-to-face -face interaction with the teacher and uh, the teacher is able to compensate for whatever difficulties the difficulties that you have these students have uh, may have uh, encountered but since in this new normal, the teachers are not present in the, the learning atmosphere and situation of our students. So there's a possibility, it's possibility of lots of difficulties emerging. And uh, parents may have, you know, um, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things to handle in their hands as far as these things coming out from their kids, from their children. So we hope that by this uh, week session on intervention, we will be able to help both the teachers and the parents be able to address uh, certain uh, difficulties of our students at home. So let me share with you my PowerPoint presentation. It's very, I'll just go straight to the point because I'm only given an hour and um, this is more of a continuation. My talk is always a continuation from day one to the last day of the week. So today I'll be focusing more on the importance of handwriting to writing and then tomorrow I'll focus on writing per se and, and, and so on and so forth. Towards the end, I'll be talking about study habits because um, uh, we, we must learn and we must be able to realize that our students may have problems with their study habits because of poor writing uh, skills. So let's start first with the basics of hand, uh, basics of writing, which is one of, which will, which focuses more on the mechanics, and let's zone in more on handwriting as a tool for writing. So let me share to you my PowerPoint presentation, and um, is it sharing already? All right, there we go. So again, those who would like to have a copy of my handouts for, for the trainings and the seminars that I have, um, especially for this week on uh, a look on, on interventions of learning, uh, learning difficulties of our students, especially on handwriting and then on writing and then on study habits later on, uh, please uh, feel free to request the handouts from my mediators and of course from the Bibal. And then if you have comments along the way, please do not hesitate to key in your comments and your questions on the comments box below. So my topic for today is all about fine modern difficulties, making writing difficult and not legible. We need to understand that our students, one, our students struggle with writing, not necessarily because they cannot compose or express their thoughts. It's basically because they struggle so much on the 
on the fine motor skills requirement, also known as the handwriting component of writing, which I think students are struggling right now because um, a lot of our teachers out there, I'm sorry for this, but I need to be honest, a lot of teachers have neglected uh, the handwriting skill in the classrooms. It has been, it has been um, um, one of the emerging, uh, emerging difficulties and deficits in the Philippines, which is now a handwriting deficit among our young learners. So let me go through our outline for this evening. We'll have an introduction again. So today's the last day for me to, to have this format because tomorrow I will have a different format altogether in presenting my, uh, my topic. So let, I'll begin again with an introduction. I'll just identify five common myths about handwriting and writing that we need to bust as we go through our discussion this evening. And then we proceed to a discussion. We need to understand certain concepts and the nature of handwriting and its importance to writing. And we're going to answer the questions as follows. One, what is writing and handwriting? We need to understand their relationship and answer the second question, which is how is handwriting important to writing, okay? And how is it related to the development of literacy skills among our students? And then I'll, I'll, I'll present to you certain strategies that I have been doing, again, the past years based on my experience and how I help my nieces and nephews and, of course, the little children that I handled when I was, uh, I was teaching uh, preschoolers before and the grade levels before. And these are strategies that uh, could help and develop enhance our young learners and writing and writing skills and definitely also for the, old, for the adult learners as well. And then we'll have an open forum. So if you have questions and clarifications of vague concepts that you think I may have not explained well, so do not hesitate to uh, write in, key in your comments and your questions and clarifications on the comments as well. And then I'll have conclusions and implications afterwards. Let us begin with bust, identifying and busting myths about handwriting and writing. Let us begin with myth number one. A lot of people believe that to be a good writing, uh, to be good at writing, you need to have good hand strength. Okay, again, to be good at handwriting, you need to have good hand strength. In fact, that is one of the requirements, but it's not the all of the requirement of handwriting. Um, in fact, the pincer or the fine motor skills are once the most important thing that we need to see among our students that should be well developed before they're able to write, uh, before they're able to grip a pencil and grip other writing tools. So this is a myth because it is not just the hand, but basically the fingers. So it is not the hand per se, the whole hand, otherwise it's grasping, but we want our students to learn to, to do the pincer because writing is using the tripod, all right? The, the, the thumb and the index finger, index and the pointer finger in a tripod grip, all right? So to be good at handwriting, you need to have a good fine motor strength or finger or tripod uh, finger strength, all right? So this is busted. So not the hands, but the fingers, all right? Myth number two, people do not judge you by the quality of your handwriting. Unfortunately, um, handwriting becomes later on as we, you know, as we grow older, handwriting becomes personal. And the way we write becomes more unique to every person and depending on our personality. And you will observe that uh, um, when you write something, the, your handwriting is different depending on your emotion while you are writing. So um, a lot of uh, calligraphers and a lot of psychologists have tried to to do a science on reading the personality of people by the handwriting. And we will be able, a lot of people judge people based on the handwriting or the system of handwriting that people uh, use. So a lot of people would say that individuals who do not have handwriting and it's illegible, that means they do not care about how other people will understand them. So basically people do not judge you by the quality of your handwriting is busted. It is a myth, you are judged because you're supposed to have Handwriting is one of the mechanics used to communicate to others. And if you are not able to communicate because of bad handwriting, people would say uh, he doesn't care about us understanding him or her or his ideals. So myth number two is a busted. So we need to have good handwriting, all 
right? Because it represents not only, not only our ideas, not just our personality, but because we represent also a certain system and we also represent the idea that we are trying to communicate to other people via the writing or the composition that we did or accomplished. And one of those mechanics for, for writing is handwriting. Now let's proceed to myth number three, okay? A lot of people, again, would say playing on the iPad doesn't help develop handwriting skill. A lot of reach, like a lot of, a lot of people said that if we allow our kids at a very young age to use immediately iPad for handwriting or tablets or cell phones for them to write or to develop the handwriting, then they will not develop a really good handwriting uh, system or skill. Uh, that is not right. It is busted. Why? The explanation there is, it's not totally uh, wrong. It depends on the application of the games that students are playing. It, if the game is more of using brushes, the students will be able, like using a pencil, and there's a pencil, uh, I don't know how you call that, but a pencil that they're allowed to write on the pad, that would help the students develop their handwriting skills. But if they're only using iPad to drag things, drag, drag, that is not good. So do not use, it depends on the application. So if the best way to help our students develop using technology, using digital technology, using app, tablets, using cell phone is the use of the pen. That, I don't know how you call that, but there's a pen. Uh, I used to have that with my uh, Samsung Note, Note 4 or 5. And that's where I write, I scribble down. And if those, those kind of gadgets and those kind of tablets that utilizes those pens for writing, help the students, help our children develop uh, their handwriting skills. All other application does not, all right? So it's not totally wrong. So therefore it is busted, okay? So games per se would not develop handwriting skills for our students, but you know, scribbling, all the activities of scribbling and all, would help our students. So I will not say, I will not suggest that using tablets is not good for than writing skills development because it does, it depends on the application. Thank you very much. And let's proceed to myth number four. Reading a lot will make you a better writer. No, reading a lot will make you a better reader, but writing and writing makes you a better writer. There's a saying that all good writers are all good readers, but not all good readers are good writers. Therefore, if you want our students to be able to write and be able to learn handwriting system, they must engage in it actively. And as teachers and as parents, we need to provide a certain time of 15 minutes every day would allow our students to develop handwriting. But there's a key element to that. I will discuss that later on. The word is consistency, all right? And therefore, myth number four, reading a lot will make you a better writer, is a myth. It will not make you a better writer. There are a lot of good readers out there, but they're not writers. But we can say that all good writers are all good readers. All right, let's have myth number five, the last myth. Writing is a compulsion. A lot of people would say, I, I, I cannot write because I'm not, I'm not inspired. I, I'm not into it by now. Well, no, writing is a skill and writing is a task, okay? That is also given to individuals, given to professionals, given like doing reports, annual reports. You cannot tell your boss and say, I'm sorry, I cannot, I cannot finish the annual report. I cannot finish the grades of my students. I cannot finish the anecdotal records of my students because I am not inspired to do that. No, um, unlike... Well, it probably will be true for some creative writers, but writing as a task, as one of the general tasks demanded of us in a professional world, in an academic world, it must not be a compulsion. Our students must be able to use this at will like any other skill, like skill in sewing, skill in cooking, skill on reading and all other skills, biking. It cannot be based on inspiration. It could be, should be at will because we've been doing it constantly with constant practice and constant engaging with this task, then we're able to uh, use it at will, all right? So therefore, writing the compulsion is busted. It is a myth. All right. So to answer most of these answers now will be will be uh, uh, detailed to us. Okay, during our discussion. Okay, so let us start our discussion. Understand the concepts of 
handwriting and writing skills of our students. Let's start with the question number one. What is writing and handwriting? We need to distinguish the two. We cannot say that because we cannot just generally say that students who have bad handwriting are bad writers, or students who have good handwriting are good writers, or vice versa. Handwriting does not necessarily mean you will become uh, good writers, but it will make you know the communication, the written communication, more legible and more understandable. But composing and expressing ideas altogether are different ideas. So let's define writing and handwriting as two different concepts. So let's start with the idea of writing. Writing is a process, right? It's the process of putting in putting the, the individual, the author's meaning or purpose, ideas, thoughts, and feelings and emotions into uh, into print, okay? Into print in order to communicate to the reader. So it's called written communication. So the writer tries to express his ideas, his thoughts. Compose their ideas and thoughts in a system using a writing system uh, to produce a text. Yeah. And this text will be used to communicate to the reader and author. So that's the reading process. So that's why writing and reading are two facets of the same coin. While writing is considered to be an active process and reading is a receptive process, I do not, I, I totally disagree because writing process. I would say it's a dual process. It's both active and passive because the writer, when he writes his text, will be the first reader. He does not necessarily have to, you know, publish immediately the text um, to and, and allow the readers to read it. He will be the first reader. So he, it is, it's a dual process. And li like also with reading, the reading process, it is a dual process. The reader tries to understand the author, and the the, the reader also tries to use his schema or background knowledge to understand the text and try to elicit the message and the purpose of the author, all right? Now, the handwriting process there would be uh, on how to express the ideas, and that would be the writing or the writing system. And the writing system, one of which would be the mechanics, which is handwriting. So let us now define writing based on that graphic presentation. Writing then is the process of using symbols, letters of the alphabet, punctuation and spaces to communicate thoughts and ideas in a readable form, okay, in a readable form. Therefore, in this definition, no matter how good a writer is, but if he doesn't know the, the writing system, that would be the handwriting system as well of a particular language, he will not be able to express his thoughts and so on and so forth. A good example would be, I am, uh, I do not know the writing system, the writing system of Chinese, so I will not be able to, even though I have a lot of ideas to, to share, I will not be able to communicate to non-English speaker, not Chinese or non-English speakers or non-English readers to this uh, 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 communicate with them because I do not know how to form their letters, how to form their uh, their characters. I mean their characters and the directionality, and I do not know how to compose using their system. So it is very important for us that that writing, no matter how good you are as a writer, and if you're using certain language, you need to understand the system of the writing of the particular language. Okay. Now. On that note, handwriting is very important. There, we need our students struggle with writing because they were not taught the system. Okay, ba po ang sistema ng pagsulat sa Filipino sa mother tongue at sa English? Sa English, sa English. Language pa talaga ako pag gabi na talaga. Anyway, so let's look at this. Do you understand what's written there? Yes, it's it's a written communication. Someone wrote that. But of course, you cannot understand. You cannot say it's illegible. You cannot say it is not writing. You cannot say it's just a drawing. No, it is a writing system, but you just don't understand it because it is not part of your schema of your, the, the handwriting system. This is an Arabic handwriting system, right? So those who know Arabic, hand, Arabic writing system, they would know the handwriting and they will be able to understand the message behind that. All right, on, on that note, People who would like to communicate to people who speak Arabic and read in Arabic must, must learn the Arabic handwriting system for them to be able to communicate and compose, uh, communicate their ideas through that writing system. All right? So, problema natin. They are not able to um, fulfill their, the, the writing task in the academics because they were not thoroughly taught 
the writing system because basically the handwriting system of Filipino and English. All right? Ako nga hanggang ngayon, hirap na hirap ako magsulat sa Filipino. Naguguluhan pa rin ako sa pagdaga, pagbuo ng pangungusap. Dahil hindi ko alam kung kung ano mauna. Is it, an, is it pa, uh, si Muno o Panagore? I'm, I'm really bad at writing Filipino because I, in terms of, you know, uh, linguistic knowledge, I still am struggling with the linguistic knowledge on Filipino. All right? In like manner, also with my mother tongue. So I'm more il- eloquent in oral and written, I would say, I would say both oral and written in English. On poquito Espanol, si, pero more of oral, but not written, okay? Now, let's have another writing system to understand this. Uh, for those who are Chinese, who can read Chinese, they may be able to get the message from this. But for if you want to communicate with, with non, not Chinese or non-English readers, um, you need to use their writing system. So this is more of a Chinese handwriting system. So you will not be able to communicate with the writer here because you do not understand the writing system there. So in like manner, it's the same with, with writing. Writing cannot take place without you knowing the handwriting system of a particular language, right? So what about this? A very nice handwriting, right? So you call this as a cursive alphabet handwriting system, which I think we're not I think, which is what we are using in uh, the Philippine educational system. Uh, what I don't understand is that by grade three, by the end of grade three, our students uh, must have mastered the cursive alphabet handwriting system. Why is that uh, when I had uh, some of our students in high school um, do not have this kind of cursive alphabet handwriting system? Most of them in the high school write all capital letters. You call that as... Um, I forgot to call it as technical, okay? Technical writing, not technical writing. Uh, all the capitals, drafting, technical drafting writing, all right, there we go. So another one is what we call as manuscript alphabet handwriting system. So what we want to understand here is uh, how do we help our students? How do we help our students, our children at home be able to have a good handwriting so that when they when they do this, they will be able to tr- they will be able to focus more on composing, right, and expressing their thoughts because they already have good handwriting to begin with. Because if they have problems still with handwriting, they will have they will struggle so much in expressing their ideas. So pagaya pa nasa sabi po natin, hindi natin may express ang ating ideas in English if we do not know English. In like manner, in writing, we cannot express our thoughts in written English. The handwriting system of English. All right. So on that note, let us define handwriting. Handwriting, sorry, handwriting is a means of expressing language, just like speech. All right. This time it's written. Mark making is basic to humans. Then, so it means the inpunan mula nung primordial stage, kano pa nang atin during the Stone Age, the yeah during the Stone Age, the mark carvings on the walls. Ah, uh, that. Paintings on the walls and the walls of the caves, as uh, metawagan, are early forms of writing. Until later on, uh, writing and print uh, became more formal. So it's it's innate. Our expression, even if it's oral, both oral and written are innate, uh, innate to humans because it's innate for us to communicate our ideas and our thoughts and our feelings to other people. So it is a skill of symbolic representation of a writing system of a language which involves proper movement patterns, proper movement patterns, directionality, we call that, all right? And, and spatial relationships between symbols and directional conventions on the page, what we call as yung paano pag, ano ang form na pagpasok at saka yung pag, paglabas, all right? So handwriting facilitates towards writing. In fact, it, handwriting facilitates uh, early literacy among our students, okay? On that note, we now move on to question number two. How is handwriting important to writing? Why, why do we need to help our students focus on handwriting? Would it help our students learn something about it and then become better writers? Let's find out. Now, so if you are a writer, you are trying, you have, a, you have lots of thoughts, ideas, and emotions that are all inside your mind. You may be able to express this orally, of course, if you know the language, 
But when you try to write a similar to oral language, you need also the system of the language to be able to express in written form your thoughts and ideas and emotions to all people. Therefore, it is very important for every, for every student, no matter how young, no matter how old, for us to know the system of the language. And one of those systems that we need to understand about the language we're using as a tool to communicate to others in written form would be the linguistic knowledge. So spelling, uh, capitalization, uh, word choice, or what we call as diction, because linguistic knowledge uh, for forming sentences and so on and so forth. That's why it's very important that our students are given language lessons so that they will be able to express their thoughts via the language. And if they lack the linguistic knowledge, it is very, very difficult for them to express their ideas in that language. Kaya dapat po talagang grammar. Okay? Grammar is one of the elements of the linguistic knowledge. Okay? Kasama po doon ang sinasabi po natin na uh, syntactic, semantics, okay? and morphology as well. Right? Next would be cognitive and perceptual skills. Kasama po dito sa cognitive and perceptual skills would be ano ba ang tamang, uh, ano, how do we uh, the system in itself of the writing. Is it left to right? Directional to be part of the cognitive and perceptual skills. All right. And then also how we form sentences, the ideas into it in the language. Kasi hindi pwedeng express lang natin na itong gusto natin sabihin. Although the words are correct, the way the sequence of words are wrong, so mali pa siya. So there's a system of the cognitive system perceptual, uh, perceptual skills needed for us to be able to exactly Right, what we want to say. Hindi pwedeng, ito yung nasa utak natin, pero iba ang pagkakasabi natin. Halimbawa po, gusto natin sabihin na, uh, I love you. Pero sinabi niya, I think my feelings for you is differently, uh, differently uh, able, not like, like a friend. And dahil mong sinabi, pero gusto mong sabihin naman, I love you. So a lot of, the, the reader would say, ano ba gusto niyong sabihin? So the, the, the clarity of meaning it will be based on how you choose your words correctly and how you form it well. So dapat, what's inside our head must be must be clearly, clearly represented in, in print. Minsan hindi yung match. But those one that would be one of the mo, one of those troubles for our students. Hindi lang express exactly. Probably they lack the written vocabulary. Probably they lack the not just the vocabulary per se, but also how to string together the words to express the ideas. Well, punctuation marks will be part of the cognitive and perceptual skills. Uh, my name is my name is my name is Ricky, and then at the end I would say question mark. Is that a question or are you telling me? So right? So cognitive and perceptual skills will be one of the requirements for us to teach our students uh, in the system of the handwriting system or the writing system of a certain language. Next would be motor components. The motor components will be how do we form the strokes, how we form the letters, how we form, we string together the letters to, to connect with another letter and then to form the word and then the spacing for the next, in the spacing for the next word and so on. So these are all part of the system that we need to teach our students on, all right? So motor components, and that's what we're going to focus more on tonight, all right? So the importance of handwriting to writing is, I will now, let's now summarize our, our definition on that, or our concept on the importance of handwriting to writing. Number one would be the brain. The brain engages differently when we, when we write something by hand, as opposed to tapping it on a keyboard or by touching the screen. Especially for young ones who are still learning, learning literacy, it is very important for us, for us to help them be able to, to interact with the message and the idea and learn literacy via handwriting because the, the, the speed of your writing somehow helps you control the speed of your thoughts as well. This is part of the information processing theories about the brain and hand coordination, okay? So we need to help our, especially the young ones, all right? So I really highly suggest our, our parents out there that uh, if you want your kids to write, okay, use technology, but use the, the pen, the, the, the tablet with the pen so that there will still be head, the brain and the hand coordination because it helps through writing using the hand. It helps um, the child be engaged in the processing of the information. All right. 
Next would be engaging the body in writing by hand helps make writing a more holistic activity. There's more holistic uh, uh, development in it because you're not only developing the brain, the cognition of the child and learning the language at the same time, so language domain and cognitive domain, but also you're teaching them the physical, the development of the fine motor skills. So it becomes more holistic because there are more, more domains involved when, uh, when, when, when writing is, uh, when you ask your students to do writing or you ask your students, your kids at home to write. So there are many various forms of writing. It does not necessarily have to be, not necessarily have to be involved fully just letters. It could be a combination of pictures and pictures and uh, words. Like like my presentation, I have pictures, I have words, and uh, the layout, and so on and so forth. So these are things that we need to help our students to be able to express their ideas. And let us not be so strict about it, like spelling. Otherwise, it will stop the writing of our students. Although we need to focus on the on the spelling of our students, but we we don't need to necessarily uh, punish them so much about you know. Uh, errors on spelling. Eventually, we'll learn the spelling. So, alam po natin na magkamali yung bata sa, one of the uh, mechanics of uh, mechanics of writing would be uh, capitalization and spelling. Pag nagkamali po sila doon, then it's, it, I always, I always tell my, my, my teachers that errors and mistakes are all avenue for learning. Okay? Huwag magalit. It's an indication that we need to teach. It's a teaching situation. All right? Next, we have um, handwriting helps. Uh, sorry, um, there's something blocking my screen. Okay, handwriting helps students imprint and retain the letters and the letter sounds for easier recall and learn to read. This is what we call as graphophonic relationship. When they write, like when the teacher is teaching them the letters and the sounds, when the teacher asks them to, when the teacher asks them to to write and sound off the letters, the 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 process of sounding off the listening to it, the looking, the viewing of the symbol, and the writing of it is multisensorial. All the more senses involved, it there it, it it allows our students to be able to see the relationship of the sounds and the letters, putting them together, and the concept that would be the picture per se, and uh, it would help the students retain all of this uh, concepts in their heads. So it will be easier for them to become more literate as they go. Uh, as they move along with the writing system, learning the handwriting. So, dapat pag tinuruan natin ang bata ng reading, it must be immediately connected with the writing. So, handwriting is one of the elements of that. So, tinuruan natin ang sound and letter in a word, then turo po natin agad ang paano isulat yun. Right? Next would be, handwriting can help us slow down and fully engage with our thoughts. Now, this is for adults, the adults though. Like, um, I have my own my diaries and reflecting journal. So every time I write, I stop and then I, I analyze my thoughts. And every time I engage in writing, um, it refines my thoughts. It, it does. Um, there's, a, there's a good way of doing writing that refines my thoughts and, and aesthetically representing my thoughts via a better handwriting. So pag, pag pangit ang sulat kamay ko, I had to redo it. I, had, I have to redo it so that... Uh, I will be more inspired. So there's the aesthetic part of the handwriting lends itself to, to me as a, a writer to write even more. So handwriting can help us slow down and fully engage with our thoughts. So connection it refines our thoughts, right? Next would be handwriting, finally, the fifth one. Handwriting is a basic tool um, used in many subjects, okay? Handwriting, kasama po dun yung taking notes, copying, taking tests, and doing classroom work and homework, those are not called composing or they're not called writing. They're called using handwriting for us to uh, uh, to respond to certain questions, all right? Like uh, identify, identification, alam po natin ng words, masama po dalang mechanics lang po yun, handwriting. And, la, and like for essay, yun talaga ang writing. So may mga levels po yun. So we're just responding to certain word, you're presenting it to handwriting, so mga words, statements, one response, so handwriting ang kailangan natin na natin doon kasama doon mechanics, spelling, and capitalization. So all of this are requirement of all subject areas, okay? Doing classroom work and homework for almost every content area as well as in language arts classes. Therefore, poor handwriting can have a pervasive effect on school performance. A research done by the Stanford University um, and Cambridge University on, on, on students with uh, writing disability or handwriting deficit shows that um, students who do not have good 
handwriting, uh, have not developed good handwriting skills, okay, have a tendency to be more uh, lazy towards doing academic tasks. Okay, so you may want to, to, to look into that. So dapat makita ng mga bata na ako nun, dahil sa pagsusulat, I don't know, I, I, gusto ko maraming pencil, may pa color color pa ako na. You don't have to make writing and the hand, learning of the handwriting and writing very so uh, too taxing. Make it more creative for our students so that they can start writing. Diba? Nung panahon natin, uh, mga teachers out there and parents out there, diba, nag, we were engaged in writing. Bakit po? Yung stationary, colored, yung mga colored pens na yan, tapos meron pa mga gel-gel na yan, and then it engages. These are things that would, you know, aesthetically saying that's part of the handwriting, aesthetically would represent our ideas. And once we are able to do that and see that we're able to creatively uh, use those, our handwriting skills to express our ideas and our thoughts and emotions via a combination of pictures, emoticons, and words, then we are encouraged to, to continue on doing writing activities, okay? So let's now have strategies. So what are the strategies could help develop and enhance learners' handwriting and writing skills? So um, ito po ay experience ko lang po kung paano ko tinuro mga bata and I saw that it would be easy for them to uh, learn handwriting, the mechanics of handwriting and to watch, of course, um, writing per se, expressing their thoughts and ideas. Okay? It does not necessarily have to be structured though. So let's begin with pencil and belt and grip. I start with making sure that kids and students and adult learners uh, grip the belt then appropriately. So develop children fine motor skills through hand and art and hand manipulative games. So it's very important for young learners to be able to develop first their fingers, their pincer, their fine motor skills, their fingers, using all other activities like tearing, crumpling, the use of dough, okay, clay dough, or, uh, uh, or just dough per se at home, and uh, uh, picking, picking, pick up sticks. Anong namin kasi pick up sticks yun na nag-develop talaga. At the time, we didn't know that it was, it was um, developing fine motor skills. Duck stones, yung pagaganon, are good activities for young children to develop fine motor skills and would enhance their, eventually would enhance their, Pencil and ball pen grip, all right? Wag agad papahawak ang mga bata ng mga pencil kasi they will be frustrated kasi ikukorek kayo. Pero ang unang gagawin ng bata kasi grasping. So allow them to do the grasping if they're going to do art activity, okay? But eventually, it will be too tiring for their hands, okay? Mahirap po sa kanila yun. So eventually, mas maganda po talaga mag-start ko muna ng mga gano'ng activities kanya ng close open kaya sa mga bata natin close open. Now, for adults po, you have to show them that the grip would be the use of pincer. So this is the pencil, all right, it's the pencil. So you ask them to, this is your thumb, okay, this is your thumb, okay. Para po siyang gumagamit ng chopsticks. This is your thumb, then let your, let the pencil uh, uh, rest between your uh, pointer finger and in your thumb, okay. And then grip the two. So parang tatlo, ganyan o. Ilagay dito, ganyan. And then grip, tripod. Marami po dyan nagsusulat ang ginagawa po ay hindi tripod. Ang ginagawa po ay ganyan. Pag ganyan po. Okay, pag ganyan. Medyo mahirap po yun kasi maraming muscles ang ginagamit. So very tiring. Pag nagsulat ng bata, hirap na hirap siya. Pero maraming mga bata na pag eventually they know that to wrong, especially yung mga peaking na yan, natatanin sila, nagandang din sila mag-humawak mag ng pencil. Alright? Ganito talaga pag hawak. May mga tao dyan na hindi naturuan ng tamang hand grip, pencil grip. May mga buko-buko dyan sa mga daliri ninyo. Iba masakit magsulat, handwriting. That means at in, in a very young age, in elementary, sa grade 1 to grade 3, hindi kayo tinuruan ng teacher niyo ng tamang hand grip. Ang ginawa nila nila, hawak ka lang ng pencil. So, for as long as makahawak ka ng pencil, nakaganong ka lang, para sa kanila, tama ng hand grip mo. Hindi. Tripod po ha. Tripod. So, try niyo po. Kasi mas madali po. Ang tripod po natin is, ganyan po ang movement. Mas madali po siya ang mobility ng hand movement kung tripod ang ginagamit po natin. Tapos later on, Pwede na mag-engage ang mga bata ng kanyang mga style na pagsusulat na nakaganan. Merong nakaganyan, tapos isang kamay nakaganyan. Di ba nakaganyan? Okay. Nakaganyan. Yung mga ganyan-ganyan pa, bahala na siya later on. Basta natuturuan siya ng tamang hand grip, pencil hand grip. Okay? Pwede mong ipakita sa kanya na ganun pa muna. And then rest. Okay? There's what we call as the invented, and sorry, inverted, inverted 
pincer grip, okay? Especially for crayons. Yung pag po natin, pagka-color. Ang ginagawa kasi nila pag nagka-crayon, ginagamit para ay paggamit pencil ball pen grip. That is, should be inverted. Kasi pag ganito po, mapuputol po agad ang crayons para sa mga bata. It will be frustrating for them. So, mas paganda po na pag ganyan. So, tuturuan po natin. Now, the point here of the pencil ball pen grip, it must be explicitly shown to your kids, must be explicitly shown to your students how pencils are, are gripped properly. All right? So, try that. Try it out, out there. Sasabihin nyo, hindi naman ko na po kakasulat ko. O di, kung wala na po, eh di, wala na po tayo magawa. Pero, mga pag nagtuturo sa mga bata ngayon po, tama, turo natin ng tama. Kasi pag nahirapan sila, pag masakit ang daliri, they would see the writing process or the writing activity as a too taxing, a too demanding activity. Alright? But kung ganito ang pagkakasulat kasi, ila, alam niyo bang I can finish handwriting uh, one chapter kasi may mga activity kami sa aming religious, uh, sa aming confraternity, sa uh, confraternity of the Virgin of Poor. We keep on writing. I can finish in, a, in one night, just for 30 minutes, writing one chapter. And I, I love writing it. At hindi sa mga sakit ang daliri ko kasi nga, tama pagkakasulat ko. I used to have uh, writing like this. Ganito ang pagkakasulat ko nun. Ang sakit. But when I took early childhood education at Philippine Normal University and took reading later on and specialized in early literacy, uh, eventually I, uh, based on researches that I've read, I've, I've realized that my hand grip is difficult, different, uh, sorry, difficult. That's why I was not engaged in writing uh, so much, although I kept on writing, but for me, uh, it was difficult for me to, you know, continue writing because ang sakit ng kamay. At ang pamahirap doon, pag nag-stop ka sa pagsusulat mo at nagganyan ka na, Pagbalik mo, nawala na lahat ng mga ideas mo. Di ba? So ito kasi continue siya eh. Hindi siya nakakapagod. So I I could I I nagpractice talaga ako. I I I I taught retaught myself. I unlearned my I learned the skill of of apat nga yun eh kaya may buko-buko pa ako noon dati dito, meron pang bumubukol dito dati. All right? So I had to change. I have to unlearn how I grip and I realized that hindi pa na ako tinuruan doon ng mga magulang ko. Hindi na ako tinuruan ng mga teachers. No? Basta mga hawak lang ng pencil. Sige. So ngayon, uh, being you know, uh, uh, an advocate of early literacy that will be reading and writing, I explicitly request the parents and uh, the teachers to teach first, develop hand grip and fine motor skills. Muna. Importante. Okay, masakit yan eh. Masakit. So, importante. Ako, bawak magsulat, nagaganyan-ganyan muna ako. Ginaganyan ko muna yan. Para... Malusin apa mga muscles na yan. Okay? Mala muscles. Ang tinuturo kasi sa amin yung napagsusulat naman ng strokes nun ay the quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog near the bank of the river. Hmm. Alright? Next. Once children develop the hand uh, hand and pincer control, okay? I only have 15 minutes left. Lapit na po, okay? Develop the hand and pincer control. Teach them the whole jumbo, hold, I'm sorry, that should be hold, not hold. Hold jumbo crayons and pencils, all right? So, gr gross pa ang kailangan niya. So, ang unang nang tutunan ng mga bata ay grasping, all right? So, it would be difficult for them to uh, hold a regular pencil. Let me, sorry, ako kasi talaga meron pa akong pencil case. Uh, all right, there you go. Pencil, uh, like this, okay? So, mahirap so gama, gumamit ang bata ng fine pencil. This is the regular pencil and this is my jumbo pencil. Ang ginagamit ko po ay HB, I have a, uh, sorry, I have a Mongol, a Mongol Excel, okay? That's, mas malaki pa siya. So, mas madaling i-grip to ng mga bata. So, when I buy pencil from my nieces, it's always jumbo. Kasi mas madaling nilang hawakan. Nakaganyan nga sila. Alright? Kasi mas malaki. The, 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 yung diameter niya mas maliit, mas mahirap hawakan ng mga bata kasi it requires a lot of fine motor skills. Since ang kanilang develop naman ay from gross to fine, so let's start with jumbo going to regular. Okay? Huwag agad, so parents out there, teachers out there, start with jumbo going to fine. Okay? Kaya nalala nyo yung panahon natin, yung, mali, yung black na bilog na malaking pens, pencil, that was appropriate for us. Panahon natin yung lamar ko, second, basta gano'n niya. At wait. Parang sinabi ko na rin ng age ko. Ah, panahon po ko na yung ano, Ramos. Okay? So, jumbo. Start with jumbo cranes before. Jumbo cranes and pencils before going to the regular size ball pens and pencils. In fact, the regular pencils and ball pens may be introduced in grade 2, grade 3. Okay? When we start teaching them 
the cursive, right? Next would be lines and curves. So once our students know already how to grip the pencil and the crayons, it is now for us to teach them lines and curves, okay? So once children have, have developed the hand strength and control to draw lines and simple shapes like cross and circle or in art form. So do not make this very a tedious task na ganito ginagawa, the lines left. So ito tinuturoan ng directionality kasi it's left to right, sorry, parang maliyat na ako, left to right, and then you have yung uh, top to bottom, yung mga curves, curves na yan, and so on and so forth. But I would suggest that when you teach your kids um, uh, lines and curves, medyo uh, boring kasi itong nandito sa side na to. Okay? Do it in a more more interesting activity for them, like using lines and shapes and sh uh, curves to draw art. Mas maganda po yan. Mas, mas interesado sila. So they're already starting the lines, learning to uh, one of the, the requirements of, of the systems of lines uh, of, of handwriting would be knowing the lines and curves. So wag muna ituruan ang bata mong sulat ng mga letters, okay? Or letter strokes, we call them as letter strokes. Turuan muna sila ng lines and curves. So mga scribbling and all. I remember when I was learning that talagang scribbling kami noon. Tapos magsishade-shade pa kami yung mga mabilog-bilog-bilog na. So actually, tinuturo lang pala sa amin ay lines and curves and then how to, ha to, to grip the pencil. But it was in art. It was part of the art uh, from the active. Sabi nga ng mother ko, bakit meron tayong art sa English class nyo sa Filipino class? And I would say, I don't know. But it's fine. So kids uh, like myself and the kids right now, if they, they see that doing, they're, they're learning handwriting, the lines and curves level, um, they do not see it as a mandan activity, as a boring activity because it's situated in art activity. Kids love drawing, okay? And if you do that, if you, you situate learning, teaching kids to, to, to draw lines and curves uh, in a composite picture, that would be interesting for them. They would not see the learning of handwriting as a boring activity. All right. Next would be letter strokes. Pag nakita niyo na mga bata medyo nasusundan na nila mga letter strokes, copy na po siya, pwede na mo yung introduce ang letter strokes. In fact, the letter strokes will be combining it's only teaching students to combine lines and curves to form the letters. But, ito po, ha? Magkaiba po yata ang turo ko sa turo na nila. So, lowercase letters are about 90% of writing and are therefore taught first in order to force students to become functional writers as early as possible. So, unahin po muna natin ang, ang, ang lower cases, bago ang mga upper cases. Although, pwede po natin pagsabay yun ang upper case kasi letter by letter naman po ang tuturo po natin. Halimbawa, ang ginawa natin sa depth curriculum po natin, there is a letter focus or sound focus every week. So, huwag na natin paghiwalayin ang, let, ang upper case and lower case. Pero sa, sa lower grades kasi, especially for, for, for kinder, ang tinuturo muna ay sounds. Pero as we grow older, we are teaching out the minimal lang halos ang gamit ng upper cases. Eh. Yung mga upper case, ginagamit lang for proper nouns. So pag tinuro natin ang mga proper nouns, na, that's when we teach our students say that this, that's why we use the upper cases, the upper case uh, strokes of letters. Okay? So most of the time, mas kinagamit ang lower cases. So unahin, unahin po natin daw uh, ang pagtuturo ng pagsulat ng lower cases. And then later on, tuturo muna ng capitalization. How can you teach them capitalization kung lahat ng tinuro mo sa kanila ay capital letters? Diba? Ito ko, yun ang hindi ko mentioned. Ko, Bakit kaya puro capital letters ang tinuro sa kanila? Tapos pag sinulat ang mga pangalan ng mga bata, all capital letters, sabi ko, I don't understand that. Mas okay pag isulat ng mga bata ang kanilang pangalan in lower lower cases. And later on, pag tinuro na sila ng, ng proper names and common names, do not realize, ah, I should, use, I should use capital letter for the first letter of my name. Right? Uppercase letters are only introduced and dito talaga nasulat ko nila. Uh, are only to do once students can write all the lowercase letters legibly and automatically, except for the first letter of their name. Okay? Mas madali kasi ang, ang, ang pagturo kasi ng, ng combination of lines and curves, mas madali turo pa mga lower cases. Pero again, sabi ko nga, sa dapat curriculum po natin, especially for grade 1, to grade 1, kinder and grade 1, meron tayong mga letter focus po for per week. So, kung, kung ganun na po, po tayo ang focus po natin po, ay letter focus po natin, then hindi na kailangan i-separate ang uppercase and lowercase. So, pwede po natin pagsabayin silang isulat. Ituro sa pagsusulat in terms of letter strokes. 
Next, teach first the print manuscript on style. So do not do not separate the writing of the the writing of the letter strokes with numeracy. So always count. Para malaman ng bata kung ilan ang strokes. Marami akong nakikita pag sinulat ng bata yung letter ang yung yung O baliktad. Okay? Yung iba ay papunta sa right. Papunta sa right. Dapat let nakita mo yung O. O niya, di ba? It's just one. Okay? It should be from center and then left. left. Okay? Same. So, dapat tinuturo natin sa mga bata ang tamang strokes. And we know that using the Murunka approach, we have from from through air, okay, air, na close ang isang bata, air, and then on the palm, on the skin, on the back of their classmates, and then on the paper. Why? Because the more senses involved, the better that they remember. Kagaya ng sinabi mo, importance ng writing, ng handwriting to writing, it's easy for our students to retain the graphophonic relationships of letters and sounds in letters. Okay? Letter strokes. Next, we have once. Okay. Ito po ay, yan pong, yung una po natin, yung mga manuscript na yan ay hanggang grade 1. Pagdating po natin ng grade 2, patuturuan, tinuturuan na natin po ng cursive ang mga bata. So, one student have mastered manuscript handwriting. So, sir, kailan po namin tuturuan ng bata ng cursive handwriting sa English? Well, hindi kailangan na, hindi na natin kailangang separate iba pagkaturo ng manuscript writing sa English at sa Filipino dahil na sa mother tongue, most of the, all the letters of the English and the Filipino are also found in uh, the, sorry, all the letters of the mother tongue and all the letters of the Philippine, of English are all found in the Filipino. So, kung bata naturuan ng mga letters, strokes, letter strokes sa mother tongue, it's easy for them to transition to Filipino. Ang mga letters lang hindi nila, hindi nila na encounter nung sa mother tongue ang ituturo sa pagsusulat sa Filipino. Pagdating naman sa English, lahat na sulat na. So I believe that teachers should decide saan ituturo ang handwriting. Is it in the mother, in the mother, uh, mother tongue subject or in the English subject or in the Filipino subject? I would I would suggest that the handwriting basically people be in the first language, okay? Then transition it to uh, Filipino, focusing more on the letters that that are absent in uh, the mother tongue, because especially for the vowels, a lot of Filipino languages uh, lack certain vowels uh, that are present in Filipino and English. Pagdating sa English po, hindi mo na kailangan ituro lahat. Madali lang ituro ang, ang ituturo mo na ngayon ay expressing and composing. Hindi mo na tuturo ang handwriting dahil natutunan nila sa mother tongue and Filipino. There you go. Once children have children have mastered manuscript handwriting, teach them single letter cursive font style. Single letter muna ha, yung ano ang cursive ng A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. Hindi yung Si teacher agad, pinasulat agad ng word. It would be difficult for our students. Kaya ang pagdating ng grade 2, grade 3, I can scratch ang sulat kami ng mga bata dahil hindi ginawa natin stage by stage. Mahirap sa bata ang magsulat ng cursive na connecting one letter to another. Dapat separate cursive letters muna. So, like A, um, ang, ang bata. So, yung A, cursive pa rin ng A. Ang N, cursive pa rin ng G, cursive. Huwag mo nang itura yung connecting kasi mas mahirap ang connecting pa. So, later na, pag na-master ng bata, once students have mastered the, the single letter cursive font style, probably a week will do. Pwede mo nang turuan sila ng connecting. Yan ang number seven po natin, letter strokes. Once students have mastered the single letter cursive font style, teach them the joining letter enter strokes and finally joining the letters. Yan, four fast Four fast frogs frolic, four fast frogs frolic, four statements ulit ulit. Pero remember, writing po yan. So ibig sa uh, handwriting towards writing. So dapat hindi individual words. Dapat meron siyang sentence na mayroong meaning. Kasi it cannot be, kung handwriting ka lang, na wala, not leading towards writing, then you are just, you know, situating the teaching of writing to just mechanics. So remember that handwriting is towards writing, okay? Or composing. Nung kami mga bata, common po sa amin, tinuturo sa amin, the quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog near the bank of the river. Tapos nung tinuturo na kami ng typewriter, matali na nang tinuturo sa amin na kasi alam namin yung the quick brown fox. And there's a picture, pero meron siya ka picture, the quick brown fox. So meron na siyang literacy, tinuturo kayo magsulat, there's, an, there's literacy because we are reading it. So while we're writing, we're reading and we are able to get uh, meaning from it. Okay? So, um, this is an example of my handwriting. Sample ko lang po ng sa akin hanggang ngayon. 
Okay. Ay, mamaya na pala. So, pag ang mga bata ay marunong na mag-cursive, okay, before I proceed, ito lang po ang problema sa handwriting ng mga bata. Hindi na nga natin tinuturo, ng, hindi na natin binibigyan ng focus ang pagtuturo ng handwriting. Iba-iba pa ang modeling ng handwriting ng mga bata. Why? Yung mga bata na galing sa kindergarten will be exposed to different handwriting of the teacher. Pagdating sa grade 2, ibang handwriting ulit ang makikita ng mga bata. Pagdating sa grade 2, ibang teacher, ang teacher na naman ay ibang handwriting. Pagdating sa grade 3, iba naman handwriting. Ito yung sinasabi po natin, handwriting must be, the handwriting system must be consistent. Okay, especially in the early grades, from kinder to grade three, all teachers must be using one handwriting system. Kung ang ginagamit po natin ay kagaya na kalasud, na kasulat po, na kalagip po sa ating blackboard sa taas, yung cursive po na dulo, dapat gundun po ang sulat din natin sa ating mga blackboards. What happened is that yung mga teachers natin nagtuturo ng kinder, grade one, grade two, grade three are using their personal handwriting. Iba po ang personal handwriting sa handwriting system pag tinuturo natin sa mga bata in the early grades. Ang bata ang nakukonfuse. So I probably this is one of the reasons why our students have handwriting deficit because the handwriting system was not consistently taught to them in the early grades. I'm sorry, but handwriting is, um, is a system that should be well taught in the early grades. I believe that when they... They move, they move from one key stage, that's from key stage one to key stage two. The handwriting system must have been thoroughly taught to our students consistently. So kayong mga nagtuturo sa kinder grade, grade one, grade two, grade three, please, isa lang dapat sa school. Kaya tinan niyo po sa mga, mga graduate po ng Divine Word, mga, mga Jansen yan, isa lang sulat kamay namin. Pag kayo ay graduate ng mga Polinian, ilang isang sulat sa sulat kamay, mga Lacon Silason, mga uh, assumptionista. Isa yung sulat kami. Why? Because, at ang lahat ng mga teachers na magtuturo doon, tinuturuan ng tamang strokes. Isa lang ang strokes. No? Alright? So, yun po ang dapat. There must be consistency. If, kung posible nga, ang grade 6, isa lang ang sulat kami. Except for, of course, for technical drafting. Iba kasi ang technical drafting like for toy tinuturo sa TLE or EVPTLE. So, pero klaro lang sa mga bata, these are for technical drafting. Okay? So, for... For expressing, so ang bata marunong mag-handwriting. So tuturo mo ng mga bata na, okay, how do you express your feelings and ideas towards composing? So bago mo na sila mag-compose, teach them first how to express in written, in written uh, language. So they must understand that uh, they can express their ideas, their emotions, their feelings, not only orally, but also through print. Okay? So one, itong ginagawa na, anong ako'y nagtuturo pa, natin. So, teach children to express their thoughts, ideas, and feelings using pictures and drawings. So, pwede mong, pwede mong uh, turuan ng bata na to express their ideas that, and realize that they can express their ideas through writing to the written form by drawings and pictures. Yung mga ganyan. Okay? Kaya, set, pwede po ba yun hanggang college? Kahit nga college, eh, diba? Susunod pa sa mga drawing. When they, they're feeling something else, they draw and all. Wala pong age limit yan. Okay? Next, teach children to express what they observe and experience through words and phrases and sentences. Like keeping a journal, observation. Uh, ako kasi journal ng panahon namin, diary. It's very important that we bring back diary and journal writing to our kids and, and so that they can write their ideas and thoughts and their experiences. Just, you know, it could be an open, uh, it could be a structured or a structured way of writing the journals. But the point there is that um, our students, uh, once they already learn how to do handwriting, the handwriting system, do we need to express that? We need to transition their handwriting skills to expressing skills in print. Okay, so we can start with talking about you write something about like once a week, perhaps. Yung panong kasi namin sa divine word namin ng Tagalog is we are supposed to write down uh, the gospel every Sunday, gospel and our reflections, and then every after mass, pinapaspermahan namin yan sa mga pare. So. Pwede po natin gawin yun na uh, sharing po, kagaya ng sana, okay? On Monday, the students will share their experiences during the weekend via their writing system. It could be a drawing, it could be using words and phrases and tense. It could be poem, per se, okay? Mas importante po, may binibigyan po natin ng pansin ang pag-express via print or via writing. Itunuran ka natin ang handwriting, pero wala naman tayong mga activities for that to continue, to continue their handwriting towards expressing their ideas and feelings. And finally, we have this children to respond to the question. Bawa, anong napanood mo? So summarizing, outlining, or responding to what did you feel about the movie, 
to be structured again or open, uh, structured or open ended. So, pwede po natin sabihin, you can write something about uh, the movies that you watched or uh, or what you did during the weekend and so on and so forth. Yung formal thing na yan, very structured kasi yan. Ngayon po natin parang sharing lang din po. Parang uh, every Monday, perhaps Monday, you choose, you know, some students, two to three students to express, to read, to read, um, uh, the experiences they did during the weekend in written form. All right? So that's about it. Um, pagtuturo ko sa inyo. So, pwede pa rin hanggang high school din. Okay? Ginagawa din kami pong uh, medyo may age na po. Ginagawa namin sa, sa Sisters of Mary. So why not kayo po in the schools there? It really helps the kids develop eventually writing habits and the writing habits eventually evolve towards study habits. All right? These are my samples of my handwriting. Baka sabihin nyo, I do not engage in handwriting. That's my handwriting for my journals and my reflective journals for my religious activities. Yeah, mga sample lang po. So, huwag nyo na basahin kasi ano yan eh. Very uh, personal. So, all right. Th that's about it. I will end my session today on that. Tomorrow, my session is all about writing difficulties that will be now on composing. So hanggang doon lang po ako sa expressing. Tomorrow, when you ask, do not ask me questions today about, sir, how do we teach students to compose? Bukas po yung topic na yan. So hanggang expressing lang po ako because handwriting towards writing. So expressing lang, hanggang expressing lang po ako muna na lalo. Alright, so do you have questions already before? So uh, yes, my uh, mediator, Michelle. Yes, po, Brother Ricky, we have a question here from Miss My, uh, sorry, Grace Aquino po. As a parent, how can I help my child to strengthen her motor skills while learning at home? As an additional po, my child has a very short attention span. Thank you. Ayun, sinasabi ko po. For, for kids at home, gamitin niyo po ang mga pag-pick ng yung mga dumi, like picking up pieces of paper, is already teaching them tensor. It develops. It doesn't have to be that long, okay? Importante po ay nabibigyan po ng pansin ng pincer. Pwede po turuan nyo yung mga bata din ng pag-fold, yung pag-fold ng mga, ng, ng, ng mga damit. Those are development of uh, uh, fine motor skills as well. Ang paghawak ng pagkain po, ang pagkain po natin, paggamit ng kutsara, tinidor, fine motor skills development. These are ordinary activities at home that you don't have to buy toys out there. These are ordinary household chores. And if you don't spell out sinasabi, if you give your kids tasks at home, they're developing fine motor skills. Yung pag, 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 paggamit ng remote control, fine motor yan, tampo yan, all right? Yung pagpupunas po, hand po yan. So yung mga paglilinis, paghawak ng, ng, ng walis, those are developing fine motor skills. So please, hindi na hindi pinapahirapan at inaalilan niyo mga anak niyo. These are all a motor fine gross and fine motor skills development at the same time teach them social emotional responsibility. So wag na natin paghiwalay yan. So a lot of parents kasi out there think that the development of fine motor skills the pagbili talaga ng clido, pagbili talaga ng crayons. No, you can kung kung sa bahay po, wag niyo nang i-separate 'yon. Gawin niyo po mga ordinary household chores sa bahay kahit yung pagsasabon sa katawan. It's fine motor skills. Yung pag-ano sa buhok, fine motor skills. Ang pag-toothbrush, okay? It's fine motor skills development. Pag samasamahin mo yung isang araw, it's more than 15 minutes. Kasi ang requirement po sana, ang sasuggest ko talaga, is 15 minutes of fine motor skills or hand and fine motor skills uh, activities at home. 15 minutes. So pag samasamahin, pag-toothbrush, pag-fold, pag-shampoo, pag-punas, pag samasamahin mo yun, I think you will exceed 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Ricky. Next question po is for Ms. Mylene Lucas. If a child po has an ongoing trouble with his or her fine motor skills, could this be a sign po of developmental coordination disorder? Um, yeah, probably. But then again, anong, anong taon, ilang taon po siya? Pero kung ang bata po are usually around like two to three years old, hindi pa naman talaga. You cannot be uh, developmentally uh, developed. A lot, of, a lot of kids have oral and written delay, not because of, of, of global or certain uh, disabilities, mental disabilities or physical disabilities, probably because konti lang talaga ang exposure nila sa bahay. Ang bata daw na lumalaki sa bahay na hindi nakikita ang kanyang mga kapatid, nakikita ang kanyang mga bagulang nag engaging in writing or hindi man lang sila in-encourage na magsulat like mga drawing materials at home, household chores, activities at home will not will 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 
will not help the kids develop their fine motor skills. So kung bata naman po ay nasa 7 years old na po, 8 years old, 9 years old, talagang hindi may problema sa hand grip po, there's a possibility of other other sources of the, the delay. So I suggest that kailangan nyo na po magpatingin ng developmental psychologist para po ma, ano po, ma, ma-diagnose po ang bata. So at an early age po, mga preschoolers po, uh, bigyan lang ng, tutukan lang po, bigyan lang po ng consent. Kahit nga yan po may mga delay, pag tinutukan po talaga, ma, makukompensate po ang mga delay na po yan. Thank you. Next question and our last question for, for this evening is from Ms. Christine Salve Santos Manal. Question po, should activities in handwriting or penmanship be given in all subjects or should be for the English subject? May iba po kasi subject teachers na okay lang na puro capital letters ang gamit ng mga students. Yun po sinasabi ko kanina, consistency. Um, dapat po lahat ng teacher should follow one handwriting system or writing system. Kasi pag ang mga bata, walang, uh, nakita niya walang consistency, wala nga siya makukuha ang system. Kami po nga sa school namin, na, sa, 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 nung sa Divine Word Generation, isa lang po ang system ng sinusulat. Like the Polinians, isa lang. Lahat ng teachers required, dumadaan ng mga teachers ng sulat nun para sa black po ng sulat kamay, isa lang talaga. So the kids are exposed to it. So as I said, exposed po, ex except for uh, subjects that utilize technical technical drafting uh, writing system, kagaya po ng uh, TLE, ano pa ba, ang uh, mga technical dra drafting na mga uh, system. Basta TLE, PPTLE, um, sabihin nyo lang na yun lang, yun lang ang, ano, ang exception. All other subjects, all, uh, all other subject area teachers must follow the same system. Yan po ang, kaya nagkaroon po ng handwriting deficits in the Philippines. I, I think one of the reasons, I, I may not have research on this, I may not have survey, but there's a good research for MA thesis for people out there. And then later on, can be developed a dissertation on coming up a theory or a framework of, 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 of teaching handwriting towards writing in the Philippines. I do believe that in the Philippines, we do not have um, a structured way of teaching students handwriting system. Kanya-kanya po. Ang ginagamit po ng mga teachers, kada subject area, bawat grade level, ang ginagamit po ng mga teachers ay personal handwriting. Magkaiba po ang personal handwriting. That's the handwriting that you use for your personal use. Yung sulat kami mga so so But if for learning, you're teaching students to, to write and using handwriting system, dapat consistent po ang ginagamit natin na system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Lee. That's all the questions we have for now. Of course, we'll proceed po to your last reminders to our viewers. Of course. All right. So let's now have our conclusion. So let's begin with, you know, conclusions. All right. To summarize everything that we discussed, we need to help our kids build the gross and fine motor skills needed for handwriting through structured games and activities. So, uh, Hindi lang po games per se. Naalala ko yung ano yung pag-throw ng ng dice, yung pag, pag ano pasting and all. These are all good fine motors, cross and fine motor skills development at home activity. We need to give our kids lots of exposure, lots of activities at home with that. Again, ang sasabi ko lang po, the household chores are good activities, home activities to develop the fine cross and fine motor skills ng ating mga anak. All right? Next, build the spatial awareness, visual and modern memory skills needed through non-pencil and pencil activities. Kasi na po natin ng pencil through art activities. So, ito na po as po sinasabi natin na art activities natin ang ipupun natin. So, drawing, coloring, mga hand paints and all. Uh, I do appreciate a lot of parents out there. Ginagawa po nila kasi there's a stage talaga mga bata po na drawing ng drawing kahit sa walls ninyo. Ang ginawa ng mother ko nang ginawa ko sa mga, sige, hayaan na lang. Pinturahan lahat ng walls ng puti, later on, pinturahan na lang natin. Yung ibang mga parents ang ginagawa po ay naglalagay po sila ng manila paper on the wall kasi nga iba yung color. Tapos, inaalaw, do not stop. Do not let, do not, do not stop that stage where kids are engrossed so much on, you know, spread links on walls. And, hayaan nyo po ang mga bata. Pero sabi, tama, itama lang kung ano. Kung gusto nyo po ay, lagi nyo ng mga papers on the walls. Pero do not stop them. Pag pinalo nyo, they would say, ah, it's a stage actually. That's a, 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 a handwriting stage through art. Sayang po eh. Hindi lang po yata nabigyan ng mga magulang ng tamang 
orientation. It's a stage that they go through, and it's a stage where kids see the connection between handwriting towards writing. In fact, by uh, so scribbles on the walls and the papers, uh, they are already starting engaging in writing. Next, support the children through the developmental pencil grip stages, including hand dominance identification. So, turuan sila ng tama, so grasping, okay, pincer, from jumbo pencil to regular pencils, right? Develop the children's ability to correctly push and pull the pencil to be able to form letters up and down correctly. First, the pre handwriting patterns and then single letter formation. So, sabi po natin na start with lines and curves. Then next would be letter uh, manuscript, letter manuscript strokes. And then you have no cursive individual letters, stroke, you know, cursive strokes, and then connecting the cursive strokes. Okay, may order po siya para development in kasi ng skills. Here's my challenge to you though. Make investment on instructional time devoted to handwriting, perhaps they call them 10 to 15 minutes daily. May pay off in preventing later writing problems including difficulties with higher level composition skills. The, the earlier that we help our students with the handwriting system, the better they are at focusing more attention, their minds, their attention towards composing and expressing composition skills, right? 10 to 15 minutes. Invest on quality early years in schooling because it's especially critical for handwriting instruction once children have formed counterproductive habits in handwriting. Yung mga mamaling matutunan niya, such as poor pencil hold or inefficient letter performation, habits can be difficult to change. Ito sinasabi po namin na if students have been, ni Dr. Patlong Haray na, if students have been successfully uh, wrongly taught, successful but wrongly taught, it is difficult to undo what has been done. Okay. And that's about it. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you again tomorrow when I talk about how we can come up with intervention activities for our students, our kids at home who have composition and writing difficulties. Right? So I'm expressing lang po ako tonight. Tomorrow will now be focusing more on Sir, hira po sila mag compose ng mga ng mga uh, reports, na mga, and that's what we're going to focus on tomorrow. And eventually, we we'll move on to our study habits, because it's a higher form. So, palaki na palaki pong ating pag-usapan. On that note, thank you very much for staying with me. I know it's already evening, and you have a lot of things to prepare for, especially for the private schools out there. You already have started your classes, and for the public school, I know that you're there. This week is quite busy for you because next week is the open end classes. But thank you very much for. Uh, staying with me and hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you and good evening. There we have it. In behalf of Evolve Group Incorporated, I would like to thank you, Brother Ricky, for being our speaker this evening for this insightful and comprehensive session that we had with you. It is an honor to be with you, uh, to have you with us today. And to all our work of Evolve viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Katulad ng sabi ni Brother Ricky, see you all again tomorrow for our, uh, our FB Live session. Mar muli maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Good night everyone! Good night!